In this video, I'll be performing a frequency response analysis using the direct method of this spring mass system shown here. Full details of this exercise are on page 429 of the PDF linked in the video description below. Now I'll go ahead and start a new Patreon session. And uh, before I begin, there's the requirement that you have to have this uh, .csv file. It's called loading.csv and I'll include a link in the video description below. And let me uh, pull up Patreon again. I'll start a new Patreon database. Call it problem 23. And I'll start uh, by hitting OK here. And uh, I'll build the model from scratch. So I'll build my nodes manually and my elements the same way. Here, click Node, Edit, and we'll define four nodes. Negative one, one zero, another one at a zero, 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 one, zero, and another one at one, one, zero. Hit Apply. And uh, the nodes have been created. Um, here at the bottom, I'm told they've been created. If I go to Home and click Node Size, you can see them here. Another way is if you go to label control and turn on the node numbers, uh, you see one, two, three, and four. Next, I want to link the nodes with the beam elements. So go to the meshing tab, go to element, edit, change the shape to bar, and simply connect the dots. So element one, two, then the one, two, three, three, two, four. 224 and 223. I'll turn on the element numbers so I see 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. Next, I'll define my properties. And under tools, I'll click beam library. I'll call this cross section, cross section. I'll scroll to the right until I find the rectangular section. And the units for this exercise are inches, pounds, and PSI. Uh, the width of the cross section is one inch, and the H or the height is one inch. Uh, you can hit OK or apply on the bottom, and make sure it says beam cross beam section cross section created. I'll define my material. So under isotropic, I'll call this one mat. For input properties, I'll give it a Young's modulus of 3E9, an epsilon value of 0.3, a density of 0.125. That'll hit OK. Hit Apply to create the material. Next, I want to apply this material and the cross section to these top elements. Under Windy Properties, click the beam icon. Call this beam section or beam member. Under input properties, for section name, select the cross section we made. For material name, select the material we just made. And for your bar orientation, define a vector that goes in the y direction one inch. So open zero, one, zero. So zero in the x, one in the y, and zero in the z. Hit OK, and for application regions, select the beam element filter tool, select element 2, add it, select element 3 and add it, hit OK. And now I've applied or assigned the material and cross section to these two top elements. Now to define my damper for element 5, under Windy Properties, look for damper. And here it is. I'll call this damper. For my input properties, I have three values to analyze. Um, I'll first use the 2.5. The degree of freedom is UY. Click OK and for application region, select this member. Add it, OK, and apply. Next, I want to define my springs. So under Wendy property, find the spring icon. And we'll call this uh, property K. Under input properties, constant is 500. Delete this coefficient for damping and the degree of freedom is UI again. Hit OK. For application regions, select these two side members. 
And again, you have to have this uh, beam element icon selected. Hit OK and apply. Now I can move on to my boundary conditions tab. I need to make a new load case, so click create. I'll call this one simply LC. And the type is time dependent and hit apply. I need to define my load at this node. So under LBC fields, click non-spatial. Here I'll just call it load. The domain is frequency and my input data. I'll input that CSV file I mentioned at the beginning of the video. Hit apply. You'll notice it dropped all the values from the CSV file in here. Hit OK. Hit apply at the bottom or hit enter. Make sure it said field load created. Now I want to apply this load here. So under nodal force, click force. Call it F. Under input data, we'll give it a value of uh, 0, 1, 0. In the JSON box, select this load. Click OK. And for application region, we're working with just the FEM. So select FEM and select this node. Click Add, OK, and Apply. That's been added. Next, I need to define displacement constraints. So I'll call this one 13456. And for my input data, I have translations in the one. Or I'm preventing translations in the one and the three. I'm preventing rotations about the X, the Y, and the Z. Hit OK, and for application region, select all the nodes. Add it, OK, and apply. And there's one last one I need to define. I'll call it two. For this one, I'll prevent transitions in just the two direction. And the uh, rotations are free, so I'll leave it blank. Hit OK and for application regions, select this bottom node, node two. Add it, OK, and apply. Next, I can move on to my analysis. So under an Analyze Entire Model, change the solution type to frequency response using the direct formulation and hit OK. Under subcases, we are modifying the LC subcase. So click subcase parameters and make sure it says LC here. Click define frequencies. We are going from zero to 30. Type in 30, make sure it says 30 here. And we are doing uh, 60 increments. Make sure it says 60 here, hit OK, hit OK here. And uh, don't think I have to modify anything else. Hit apply, make sure you get this feedback here. Click cancel for your subcase select. We don't want to run the default subcase, we want to run the LC subcase. The LC subcase has all the boundary conditions we've defined so far. Hit OK and hit apply. Now click XDB and hit apply to import the results. Under results, we want to view a graph of the acceleration at this point. So click graph, click this icon, expand it, and uh, select all the results. And uh, or we want to view the displacements, that is. Uh, select displacements, uh, leave that as magnitude. Here I'll select node 3 and I'll hit apply. And uh, if I compare this to what we are expected to get, you'll see we, we get a graph or a plot similar to the one in the example. Next, what I want to go ahead and do is run the analysis again for the next damping coefficient. Before that, I want to improve how I can read the numbers. So let me make this fixed, and make this fixed. So when I apply again, I'm better able to read the numbers quickly. Here under plot options, I'll save this graph as C equals 2.5. And the reason I'm doing this is because next time I run this analysis and do another graph, I can uh, hide the result and uh, overlay them so I get a final view of all three damping coefficients. And uh, it's time to go ahead and run the next damping coefficient. 
So here under properties, you want to modify the damper. So right click and modify. It was previously 2.5, we'll make that a 10 now. Hit OK and apply to modify it. Under analysis, simply analyze the entire model again and hit apply. Uh, we'll overwrite the previous files. Once that analysis is done, we'll import the XDB results. Do the same thing, results, graph, pick all the results. Displacement, uh, we're using the same node. Uh, this time we'll save this as uh, C equals 10 and we'll hit apply. And right now you'll notice that uh, the graph was created but it's behind it. I can go to home, tile viewports, and I get this. So now I can uh, plot them one on top of each other. And so I think. Here we go. I need to save this just to be sure. So C equals. It's apparently retain my old one. Anyways, uh, I'll make sure to leave this alone for the next analysis. And uh, you'll see that again, we get a similar plot shown here. And you'll see that they actually correspond to these values. So a value of 0.1586 here then a value of uh, what looks like 0 0.0379, so that would be here, and then the next one for damping coefficient of 30, we are expected to get a value of 0 0.0132. Let me go ahead and do that next. Under properties, modify the damper, give it a value of 30 this time, and hit apply to modify it. Under analysis, go to analyze entire model, and hit apply. And I'll overwrite the previous files. Next, I want to import the results. So click XDB and hit uh, apply. Under results, click graph, expand all the results, select all of them, pick displacements. Here, make sure you save this one as C equals 30 and hit apply. So now I have uh, the various uh, plots here. You can see they range from 0 to 30, from 0 to 0.16. And when we compare it to here, that's what we do get. Make sure to save, and this concludes this example.